Jesus. I invite you to help us to lift him up. Because he's worthy to be praised. Savior up, lift the Savior up. He's worthy. Lift the Savior up. He's worthy to be praised. Lift the Savior up. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun, He's worthy to be praised. To the going down of the sand, He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
Today we're going to begin with prayer, and we ask all those who are in the sanctuary if they would stand up, and we're going to have prayer, and then we're going to remain standing for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. Now if you have a prayer request that you would like to make, uh, just raise your hands to the Lord and talk to the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord while I'm praying as well, but we want to pray to God what happened in your life this week, how the Lord brought you out, how the Lord healed you, how the Lord encouraged you, and give him thanks for the great and wonderful things that he has done. And we want to remain standing until we have our scripture reading. Father God, I come before you in the meekest way that I know how. Hallelujah. Thanking you for this week. Hallelujah. And thanking you for the things that you have done. Not only for me, but for the church as a whole. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to bless those whose hearts are bowed in sorrow. Those that are cast down and those that are weak. I pray for those who have ailments and sicknesses in their body that they might be healed. I pray for the church as a whole that we might be able to contain a steady flow of live streaming and Bible classes and stay in contact in the way that we are right now, hallelujah. And let all these things that we are doing, let them be blessed by you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Put your approval upon what we are doing for you. Bless this message today, and let it be a good message, hallelujah. That will lift up the hearts of the people and help them to hide your word in their heart, that you might not sin against him. Hallelujah. Bless us, Lord, as we go forth in our preaching today. Use us for your honor and your glory, and let the anointing of the Lord be upon our soul. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Remain standing and turn, if you would, with me to the book of Luke, chapter 19, 19th chapter of the book of Luke. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6 in the book of Luke. When you have it, say amen. We want to read together. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up, into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture, Sunday scripture text, and what we have read is Luke uh, chapter 19, verse 3 and 4. And I will read both of those over again. Verse 3 said, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was. 
and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And number four, he ran before and climbed up unto a, into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Our subject for our message today is desire and determination to see Jesus. It begins with desire and it is pushed forward and motivated by determination. Hallelujah. Now somebody said, well, I know him. I already seen him, and I already got saved, and I already got the Holy Ghost, but we haven't made it to the rapture yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have we made it to the rapture? If we did, I missed it. Hallelujah. And we have a length that we have to go, but I wanted to tell everyone who was listening to me in the sanctuary today and in the live streaming, it's not going to be an easy task, hallelujah, to remain faithful to God for the time in between now and the time when he takes us out, hallelujah. And you say, well, Elder, that's, uh, you know, that's saddest. That's not, that's, uh, pes you're, you're pessimistic or you're, you're not saying it the right way. But I don't know about your life, but as time goes on, day after day, it becomes more of a press. Amen. Day by day, we get more things that we go through. Day by day, and week by week, and month by month, it seems like things just keep getting larger and larger and bigger and bigger than what they was last week. Hallelujah. There is tests, there is trials, there is death, there is sickness, there is shootings, there is crime. Uh, everything is going on. Hallelujah. And there is fear, much fear, among the people right now, even to go to the mall or someplace where it should be safe because you can get killed at the mall going to get a new dress or a suit or some clothes or maybe just to meet some friends and walk around. Hallelujah. It's a desperate time. I say it's a desperate time. And if we really want to see Jesus, it's going to cost us something to see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Jesus entered in and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Hallelujah. Somebody say, well, who was Zacchaeus? Who was this man that we're talking about? He was a tax collector, or he was a chief among the tax collectors. Now, the Romans did not do the dirty work themselves. They hired the Jews to collect taxes from their own people. Hallelujah. And not only did he take money from his own people and give it to the Roman government, but if he was a chief tax collector, he was like a man who was over a bunch of other publicans, and they all gathered the money and brought it to him. Hallelujah. And the government was not worried about if you get a little extra for yourself. They weren't worried about if you get a little bit more than what you're supposed to have. 
And there was a lot of extortion that went on in tax collecting. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, in our text, uh, they called him a sinner. <laughs> they said Zacchaeus was a sinner because he's taken our money and given it to the Roman government. Hallelujah. And if you were the chief tax collector, nobody knew who you was anyway. But your publicans, the rest of them, had to bring the money to you and you gave them what you owed them. You gave the government what you owed the government. But if there was any left over, guess who got it? They did. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were swiping lots of money off for themselves. Hallelujah. And Zacchaeus was a chief among the publicans. And the Bible said he was very rich. Hallelujah. Oops, that don't say that. Does. Well, I found out when I read the text that he was very rich. Because any man that can give half of his income to the poor and reform <laughs> and restore fourfold to anybody that he has offended or took money from by false means. He must have a little bit left because nobody, I don't think, in this room can take half of their money and give it to the poor and restore fourfold everything that they have took by, hallelujah, deception, hallelujah. So he was, the Bible don't say this, I'm saying this, he was very rich. Hallelujah. But riches and material things cannot satisfy the human family. Hallelujah. We might as well get it in our minds. We have a lot of good things that we want. We have a lot of things that God has given us that we didn't even ask for. Hallelujah. But you can have all types a material blessing. You can have all types of riches. You can have money where you can buy whatever you want to buy. But it does nothing for your soul. Hallelujah. 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 And I believe that's what the case was here. That Zacchaeus was rich. He was despised by his own people. He didn't care about that as long as he got their money. Hallelujah. But there was something inside of him that wanted to see Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. I got plenty of money, but I want to see Jesus. I, I got everything I need, but I want to see Jesus. There's something down inside of me that bothers me, it nags at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I look at everything I have and I'm still not satisfied. I'm like Solomon after he has sinned against the Lord. Vanity of vanity, all this vanity and vexation of my spirit. I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 3 said he had a desire to see him. In verse 3, he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press because he was little of stature. Amen. Now, I'm not going to do... I'm going to tell you, there's no pun intended. There is no body that I got in my mind I'm thinking about. And I'm not preaching against little people. But he could not see Jesus. Because he was too small, 
Hallelujah. He could not see him. He had the desire to see him, but he was too small. And then when he tried to get close to Jesus, uh, the people were pressed in all around him, and he couldn't get through the crowd, and he wasn't tall enough to look out over the crowd and see Jesus. Hallelujah. He could have said, I give up. <laughs> I have a desire to see Jesus, but I give up. I, I can't see him because I'm too small and I can't press through the crowd and I can't stand outside the crowd and look over and see him. But I am determined. Hmm that I want to see him. I got it in my mind that I want to see him. So if I can't see him because I'm little, or if I can't see him because of the crowd, I have to overcome the press. And I have to overcome my small size and find something that can kind of equalize us so that I can see Jesus. Hallelujah. What he was saying, my size is not going to hold me back. The press that is around him not going to hold me back. I really want to have a has actually have an encounter with him. I want to see him. I want to see who he is. I've heard about him before through the preaching and teaching of God's word, but I want to see him for myself. Oh, if I could just see him. But every time I make up my mind, I'm on fulfill the desire to see him, something gets in the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to let that stop me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let that shut me down and stop me so that I cannot see Jesus. Hallelujah. But what you going to do Brother Zacchaeus, well, I'm going to run before him until I get to a sycamore tree. Mm. And when I get to that sycamore tree, which is about 25 to 50 feet high and about 60 feet wide, with only little branches to climb up high enough to see him, I'm going to climb up in that tree. Because I have the desire to see him, but things keep blocking me off so I can't see him. And I'm trying to see him and I want to see him, but I can't see him. So my plan B is... I want to go where the sycamore tree is. I want to climb the tree. And when he comes by this way, he's supposed to pass this way. I'll be able to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read the text and I preached this before. Somebody said it not, not so very long ago, but the Lord impressed upon my mind, if you can't get to me, you have to make something disappear, or you have to do something greater, or you have to find a device to really fulfill what your per previous desire is. You can't just sit down in a seat and say, oh, I want to see Jesus. Oh, I want to see Jesus. Oh, I want to see him. But if that don't work, <laughs> I said, if that don't work, children of God, you got to get 
something to overcome your disadvantage and you got to get something to help you to move you into a position where you can see Jesus. That is called determination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said that's called determination. Wanting to see him and having a desire to see him is to feel a strong consciousness or an impulse to see who Jesus is. But determination means an act, A-C-T, of deciding on a plan or a way or a firm way or a firm purpose whereby I can see Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, uh, those that are listening to me, it was not an easy task to climb the sycamore tree. The base of the tree was 60 feet wide. It was a fig tree. But it had little branches on it, and it had figs. And people could come by there and pick the figs off of the bottom part of the tree, but when it got so high that you couldn't reach up no more, you had to climb the tree. Hallelujah. And Zacchaeus, if he was a little man, he had to climb at least three or four feet, even up above his height that he was in order to see Jesus. But he was determined. He was determined that he was going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Do I have any people in this building that has a desire to see Jesus? And do I have any people in this building that has a determination in their soul that whatever happens, whatever I go through, whatever I run into in my life, that tries to block me off from seeing Jesus, I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to be a way to get around it. I'm going to do something that I have to do in order for me to see Jesus. I'm not going to let the grandchildren hold me back. I'm not going to let my circumstances and my conditions and my physical condition and my body and the things that is in me, I'm not going to let that hold me back. I'm going to do something because I want to see his face. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the street of glory. Let me lift my voice. Lord, don't let these 60-some years of salvation and I have walked with you, don't let them be in vain. Don't let nothing come between me and Jesus. I've got to see. I must see. I can't afford to lose out seeing Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I am determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Through hard trials, tribulation, persecution, I'll be faithful. I ain't going to let the devil shut me down. 
I'm not going to let discouragement and depression and heaviness shut me down. I'm not going to allow what people are saying to shut me down. I'm not going to allow the present conditions that are here to shut me down. Through hard trials, tribulation, persecution, sickness, disease, people's mouth. I ain't gonna let them shut me down. I ain't gonna let them stop me because I am determined. I have my heart is fixed, my mind is made up to do what the Lord said do. And I'm not taking no for an answer. I must see Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to the place where he was, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at your house. Hmm. Now you might laugh at what I'm going to say, but Zacchaeus is spending all his time and energy trying to see Jesus, and Jesus was coming to see him. <laughs> and Jesus was on his way to see him. He said, Elder, how do you know that verse 10 said he came to seek and save that which was lost? You mean he, Jesus didn't know that Zacchaeus was trying to see him? You mean that Jesus didn't know he couldn't see him and he ran down and climbed up the sycamore tree? That's why he stopped at the tree. He looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. <laughs> How you see me up in here, Lord? I know you're up there. You might have some leaves around you, but I know you're up there. Come down because I must abide at your house. <laughs> ah, Lord. Hallelujah. Why did he go through Jericho? Hallelujah. Why did he make his journey through Jericho? Because that's where Zacchaeus lived. Why did he tell his disciples, we're going through Jericho? He wanted to have an encounter with him and bring salvation to his house. Mm. Now you tell me that God don't plan nothing and God ain't got no plans for nothing. He has orchestrated everything that has happened in your life. You might have thought it was somebody else. You might have thought it was some other plan that you had or somebody else had. But every one of us that is in here, if Jesus wants us to see him, he will draw us to him. If he wants us to be saved, he will give us that opportunity to be saved. Why did I go to church last night? I went to the church last night and my heart wasn't right, but something got a hold on me. Jesus planned the whole thing. Zacchaeus said, I want to see Jesus. Zacchaeus said, I'm determined to see Jesus. But Jesus was orchestrating the whole thing. 
Listen to me, church. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying to be super spiritual. But everything that has happened in all of our lives has been planned by the Lord. Good things. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bad things. Oh, I don't want no bad things, Lord. But when your body gets sick, you start praying. When you start coughing, you start praying. When you don't feel good, you start praying. When your body ain't working right, you start praying. When you get so weak you can't hardly move, you start praying. Said, why did God allow that to come upon me? He let it come on you because otherwise you would have been going to the mall or some other place and doing something else. But he said, I got something that I can draw your attention to. You think that you're seeking me, but I'm really seeking you. Your desire is pushing you. Your determination is pushing you. But if you turn it around, I'm just moving you like on a checkerboard and getting you where I want you to go so we can meet and talk together and get done what I need to get done as far as you are concerned. Zach, yes, you need to get your mind off of your money and your riches and get something spiritual in your life. When I came in to Jericho, I was looking for you. When you was thought you got the idea, I want to see Jesus, I was looking at you. When you ran down the road and climbed up in a sycamore tree by my omnipotence and by my onesis, I knew where you were. I didn't walk by the sycamore tree and said, oh, I wonder where Zacchaeus is. He stopped right by the tree. Oh, there he is. He thinks he's hid up behind them leaves up there, but I see him. Come down, Zacchaeus. Make haste. Come down. For today, I must abide at your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Mm, I love that. I'm glad to see you, Jesus. <laughs> I've had a desire to see you, and I was so full of desire, I created the determination to see you, and I've been working hard so I could see you. <laughs> and he came down and he said, Jesus, I'm glad to see you. My desire didn't work out, but my determination did. You stopped right at the bottom of the tree and looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. He could have just very easily, if he hadn't known he was in the tree, he could have just walked right on by and made him holler and scream out of the tree, Jesus, Jesus, I'm up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it was all part of the plan. Every one of you, including myself, God has a plan for our life. We make the plan, but he already has a plan. 
we be thinking about what we going to do. But God already knows what we're going to do. And if we are not in the place, even now as I speak, that he wants us to be, he's going to move stuff around until we get into the center of God's will. Till we get into a program that will make us spiritually mature and will make us the children that God wants us to be before the rapture comes. Hallelujah. So don't be angry when bad things happen to you. Don't think that God don't love me no more. Because if he loved me, he wouldn't let me go through this. But whatever you're going through, he's taking you somewhere that you have never, ever been before. Job said, mm -hmm. I have heard of him with the hearing of the ear. But now, my eye sees him. It's in the 42nd chapter of the book of Job. This is not on the live stream. Job cursed his day. Job said he wished that he had never been born. He went through so much suffering, he suffered more than a lot of people have ever suffered. And he never realized, why am I suffering? Why do good people suffer? Why do righteous people suffer? Why do people who's walking with God suffer? He's taken us somewhere. But always remember, he loves you. He cares for you. You are precious in his eyes. You are beloved in the eyes of God. But when I get done with you, you will be in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. When I get done. When I get done. Job didn't understand. Why do I have so much trouble? Why am I sick? Everybody else running around, look like they got good health, and mine is about half good. He's taking us somewhere. Let him take you where he wants you to go. He's not dumb. He's not ignorant of any of our problems and difficulty that anybody even here and in the live streaming is going through. He knows you're down setting. He knows you're uprising. He knows your thoughts are far off. He hears every word that you say to him. When that pain hits your body, he feels it because he is a faithful high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. I must press on. I never get done with these sermons. Hallelujah. He goes to Zacchaeus' house, the other publicans and self-righteous, hypocritical Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians said Jesus should have never went to dinner with him because he's a sinner. Uh, we wash our hands every time we get ready to eat. We don't eat with dirty hands. 
We don't pluck corn out of the field and just take the husk off and eat it. Self-righteous. Self-righteous. Held by tradition. But Jesus said, those that are whole, they don't need a physician. But the ones that's sick. I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners to repent. I'm going to Zacchaeus' house. I'm going to talk to him. And Zacchaeus is going to talk to me. Zacchaeus stood and said unto him, Lord, behold, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore unto him fourfold. Now, what he's saying, he's speaking concerning the law. If you took a man's oxen and sold it or killed it, you had to restore five oxen for one oxen. If you took a man's sheep and did the same thing, you had to restore four sheep for one sheep. That is found in Exodus 22 and 1. So he's saying, not only am I going to help the poor, which I never even thought about before, I'm going to start helping the poor, and also I'm going to give back in restitution all the animals that I took for bounty or I took and sold that people gave to me, and I'm going to restore that animal or that money back to those people. Now, he's going above and beyond the call of duty. Amen. But when true repentance comes within our heart, there is something that demands within us restitution to the people that I have hurt. Amen. Jesus said unto him, he received salvation. Jesus said unto him, today, this day, is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Now, actually, and I want to explain this. I think I have enough time to do that. When he said that salvation had come to his house, he's talking about he is being justified by faith. He's talking about his belief in Jesus as the Messiah of Israel has saved him. Now y'all looking at me really funny. But if you know a lot about the Bible, which we do, this is a different dispensation. This is a different covenant. Jesus hasn't died yet. Jesus hasn't been buried yet. The day of Pentecost has not come yet. He pressed his way to Jesus. He believed in Jesus. He was determined to see Jesus. He received Jesus joyfully took him to his house and repented before Jesus. Jesus said, you're saved. Hallelujah. He said, you're saved. He saved because he is a son of Abraham. 
Amen. And if he is a son of Abraham, under that covenant, under that dispensation, he can be saved. Hallelujah. 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 Now in the book of James, chapter 2, I want to look there, and then I'm going to go to Titus for about two minutes. Let's go to the book of James. Chapter 2. Verse uh, 22 through 24. 22 said, Seest thou how faith with his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now listen to the rest that James said. James said, ye see then how that by works, by works, do you get it? By his faith and his works, he was justified and not by faith only. All right. Now there's another little twist to that as well in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the last chapter. All those who were saved under faith in the Old Testament and under the law they still have to wait for the saints. They still have to wait for the saints. But what God is going to do, he's going to save all of Israel in one day. The Holy Ghost we have, he's going to give that to them. Speaking with other tongues, he will restore them. But all those who are Jews, even those that are in the grave and have died, he's going to resurrect them up out of the dry bones in the valley, and they shall become a nation. Hallelujah. Got it? So Zacchaeus received salvation. All right? Last scripture. I didn't want to. I didn't want a bunch of. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> we ain't never heard that here. <laughs> but he was. He was saved. Desire and determination will save us. Titus chapter 2, finally, our desire and determination is in basically two things. Number one, we have to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and we have to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And number two, we must be determined to hold on to that desire to see Jesus until he actually appears. But we should be looking for him. All my eyes clear? We should not take our eyes off of him 
but we should be looking for him. I was coming home uh, one night recently, and the sky was so pretty, there was people out on the sidewalk was looking at the sky because they thought that was Jesus. But when Jesus actually comes, it'll be in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. You could be sitting in this building, and he could come and leave, and nobody would even know except the empty seats or maybe the people that were here. All the, all the spaces were gone. And they, it'll be momently. It's fast as you can twinkle your eye. That's how fast it's going to be. So you ain't going to be standing there gawking at the sky. Oh, that must be Jesus getting ready to come. If he comes, it'll be whoop, whoop. And we'll be gone. But we must be looking for him. We must be living holy when he comes. We can't go back to the old stuff. We got to hold on to what we know is right in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. And we will be caught up to meet him in the air who also gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Fifteen and the last, these things, class, saints, children of God, those that are listening to me, we need to be talking about these things. Can I say that one more time? We need to be talking about these things. We're talking about all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things that are going on in our world. But we really need, if you read your bulletin for this for the day, we really need to be speaking to one another, hallelujah, and encouraging one another in love and talking about the day that is approaching, which is the day of Christ. Amen. We ain't got time to worry about this other stuff. Because why would we let years and years go by a faithful service to God, and then when it comes time for it to happen, hallelujah, I got my mind on something else. Lord Jesus. Fifteen, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. Hallelujah. That is our desire. And that is our determination. I hope that you enjoyed the sermon today and